And so last episode, we talked about the car, the engine, the B16A EG. Then we pulled the engine, inspected the head, looked at the ports, and it all stock in good form. And even the block, everything was fresh. So we made the template for port matching it, get the manifold ready. And here now, we chopped it off. And of course, we started porting the head. Now here is we're porting the pocket or the bowl. Yes, sir. And of course, the intake manifold is taking shape and it's going to be really good now. Look at that. The contour is getting better. And the current status of the head is currently pocket ported. And you can see it here. And of course, a few updates on parts like the pistons that we ordered is going to arrive. So let's see how far we go. check the block it was in good condition as you can see when we compression tested in the previous video it was pretty decent and also we checked on the head here the core shift surprisingly it was not so bad so there's gonna be good work and here we lined up the intake manifold getting ready to cut it because we're gonna port it to actually maximize the setup to get the most power we can get of course and efficiency and here we cut the template of the intake gasket this way we can use it as template or pattern to port match the intake manifold perfectly and also here as mentioned earlier in the video I, my friend josh who owns motor Corp solutions offered to give us a hookup price on a PCT pistons for this project and guess what the owner jumped the gun so now this pistons we're about to receive it and here it is ready packed and it's, as you watch this video it's probably going to be arriving here in a few days and if you guys remember on the previous episode we couldn't remove the crank or disassemble a block because we i couldn't find the seven size 17 12 point socket so we ordered a new set and so of course it arrived a few days later so we got to disassemble it and here it is the block is re looks really good and fresh that brown or gold color that's the coolant because the they were using a red colored coolant so that's marking up on the coolant passages or, or water jacket but this is a fresh block after of course after degreasing it's going to be really really good and here's the crank the crank actually turns freely and really good so with new bearings this is gonna be really really good and really awesome yep we did check everything is within spec and of course the itr take manifold we lined up the line where we're gonna cut it and of course we're gonna port it but the head is also good so we started working on the head so let's go and of course that size 17 12 point socket will probably show up when we no longer need it that's what happens all the time so now onto the porting bench as you can see the core shift is not too drastic so this is going to be good because it's not going to need a lot of work so we can just go straight to 80 grit then going with carbide first as you can see the core shift is still there but not as bad all right so now let's start off with 80 grit instead of the carbide cutter so we go we make a few passes make sure it's aligned well to the seat of course and we time lapse this so it doesn't get too boring all right as you can see every pass i do i try to feel it with my hand or my finger just to see if it needs more or less or you know if it's okay but if it needs more we keep going on that same area just to be sure just to make sure it's consistent so now there's two more chambers left i mean two more ports well okay, four ports sorry all right there you go okay now let's look at close oh yes yeah, so you can see the core shift is still there but it's not too drastic so this one is good it's gonna be really good all right and so uh, this work here we actually have a video of this at the members only section it has all the details including the angle of the attack of the carbide we make sure we explain it there and of course it also has a dyno run of the result of the head and of course the b16a it made 186 wheel horsepower at high rpms so you know this worked and so if you haven't subscribe and hit the bell notification this way you get updated whenever you have good stuff like this when we upload it you would know right and of course if you're liking this video hit the like button because that helps the algorithm spread the video to a wider audience so that's something that we really really do appreciate so come on hit the like button all right let's go and so now we jump at the exhaust ports we go with the 
80 grit right away because the core shift and plus you know the carbon buildup wasn't too drastic or wasn't a lot so i figured no need to jump with a carbide cutter we can just go straight to 80 grit and here it is it gets cleaned up really faster but not all heads can go all the, uh right away to 80 grit sometimes or a lot of times we go with, with a carbide cutter first as you've seen in the other videos right here you make sure you have a gas mask or respirator here because that carbon dust is not really good for your lungs for anyone so you gotta be always healthy guys so be careful with that don't breathe it in all right now here we are and look at that it's almost getting there right so we're gonna make a few more passes including the chamber and then clean it up and show it to you guys on the work on the workbench all right so let's go we're gonna wash it up a bit and here we are now as you can see now it's all cleaned up it's not yet finished it's not yet done just a need it needs a few more passes or a few more touches but the exhaust part is starting to look really good right as you can see it's still unfinished but you can see the core shift by the bowl it's still there we didn't remove that because it's gonna twist the port or make the port shape not really ideal or ideal for performance so we just leave that out sorry about the focus there all right Let's look, let's look closer toward the chamber here. As you can see, we've cleaned up the few sec. We didn't actually reshape it, you know, we just cleaned it up so that it goes well. And here you can see the core shift. This is left untouched because we can actually clean that up with a carbide, but you can imagine the port shape is not going to be ideal anymore. So we always leave that out depending on core shift because some heads don't have that core shift as bad. But this one, the exhaust is quite, you know, evident. But the intake, as you can see, is not so much, right? So this is actually really decent. As you can see here, they're all different on each port. The depth are different or the core shift. So you got to pay attention to that. All right. Now here on this section. Yes, the head is almost done. It needs a few more work. We're still going to work on that. And here on the intake side, you can see we just did the for now it's just the bow work or po pocket work we're still gonna work it further but you know this work like this already does really really good it does an awesome job this is our version of a type r this is our type r porting or pocket port whichever you want to call it this flows really good with a good set of valve job this is more than enough for most or usually the street cars around this was really really good and actually, you know, we have a video of of a, a more detailed work that we did of pocket porting a PR3 B16 head like this on the members only section with all the intricate details or tips that we do so that it helps you guys or helps the people that run the shop get some good pointers on it. Okay, now let's go to the intake with better lighting. And here you can see that looks really good. It's contoured really well. And you can see the left side and right side is actually more equal. But if you clean up everything, like even those core shift on near the right side, that the whole port is going to be twisted, right? It's not going to be going well. You can see even the short turn is really good. And also, like I said, the video of the members only section, the video that we did about the pocket porting a PR3 B16 head, that actually same head we dynoed, it made this much. 186 wheel horsepower that's just the b16a with just the pct pistons and of course with that's the same head that we did on the members only video that's what we talked about on the dyno session including the tuning and the changes because that's also the same engine with the cam degrees with a 402 cam so that video on the dyno session we talked about how we read the dynograph all the tuning ignition and all that so to those in places where there's not many shops or plan to diy the channel memberships are really really important but for everything else we try to provide everything that we can share here now onto the itr manifold that we cut up we actually started working on it with a carbide and started smoothing it out with 80 grit so now here it is this is still 80 grit and you can see it's getting smoother but that's mainly because we actually lubricated it with our ethyl alcohol mixed with soapy water so now we're trying to get all the contours good and you know without any bumps or ridges and actually it's it's kind of hard to explain if you haven't tried it but every time you make a certain like back and forth passes or the with a cartridge roll you would certainly feel if there's bumps or, or something une unequal on the surface and that's what you target and get it all smooth 
That's why later you will see with the light reflection, it's all smoothed out and contoured well. Yes. Okay, now last one is going to be runner four with a little bit more here. There. Okay, now on to near the throttle opening. Yes, starting to look good, right? Okay, now let's look at it closer. Let me show you. I took the phone. As you can see, there, it's starting to look really good. It's starting to taper well, right? So now let's go with the roof side or the roof of the runners or the entry, all right? So that, we can, you know, we can contour it well, just like how it is at the bottom. This way, it ends up being like a velocity stack, like reshaped well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I was getting there. All right. It's a little bit more. Okay. Now, okay. Now let's wash this up and let me show you on the desk. Here, you can see the shape is starting to get there, right? It's looking really, really good. Let's see with the light. Here, you can see the whole runner is actually pretty consistent and actually tapers, you know. It starts from big, slowly tapering it to small and near the flange of the intake manifold, that's factory sized. So this way it can let me port match it after. And now we did a few more passes, but this time this is with 120 grit. As you can see, the shine is a little different. That's because it's 120 grit. It's actually a lot smoother than earlier. As you can see here, you can see runner number one, that looks like a velocity stack, right? So now here we're back at the porting bench. Now we're gonna do a few more runs with 120 grit just to get close to how we want it. Let's go. And here we sprayed it a bit with the kerosene. This way it cleans it up really well. And you can see the finish is starting to look different because we used kerosene. And later on, we're still gonna use ethyl alcohol mix. So this is just to get us to, to see or to show us how the contours are. As you can see, it's starting to look really good. I mean, like it is starting to show good reflection if it's like smooth or contoured or there's bumps or ridges, right? So now we make a few more passes to the opening and then we wash it up. Let's go to the desk. And now here we are. Sorry again about the rain. You can hear it, right? But you can see now it's all smoothed out. Oh yeah, now this looks like a velocity stack or a bunch of velocity stack on the runner entries, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now this is gonna work and run really good. Look at that, number one. That's a velocity stack, right? Yeah, that's look. That's looking really, really good. Yes, and so the reason why we're actually exploring, or actually trying to improve the intake a lot more than usual is because this B16, the setup is, is gonna run ITR cams. And for the goal of 180 wheel horsepower, it can be considered as slightly under cammed because you know we need more rpm and more breathability right so in order to compensate for the itr cams we're trying to improve the induction really really good or more than we can as much as we can actually sorry because this could actually help make the engine think like it has a slightly bigger cam it's gonna it may work it should work and hopefully it works so we will know when we dyno so that's gonna be fun right because this is what actually makes engine building really really fun for me you know you know having these challenges like this and knowing how to try to exploit what it can do and if it reaches that goal hey that's awesome right now we invert the intake and we can see from the other side well you know from the opposite angle you can still see all four mimics are velocity stack. That's gonna be good, right? And here on this side too, from this angle, you can see the light glare or the glaring of the light is all consistent, right? Okay, so this is gonna work good. So now let's go to the block. Here we are now, partially cleaned because we had to disassemble it all together. You can see the red part or the brown part on the outside of the sleeve is actually coolant. Yes, now, now let's turn it and let me show you some more of the block here. Let's slightly speed it up so that, you know, we're gonna turn this around. Let's look at the back side of the block. Here you go, okay. So now here on this part here, there's the breather box. So the factory breather box will still be here. We're still gonna connect it because this is effective on idle, part throttle even until 50% throttle. And it pulls vacuum even near the cylinder head here. So it's gonna pull the pressure buildup even on the valve cover. But we're gonna remove this right here 
and vent this out to the catch can or yeah to the catch can this way on full throttle or anything over 80 percent or 90 percent throttle where there's ma zero manifold vacuum or actually boost if you're boosted the block is still vented out that way so if so do you have a good crankcase ventilation on part throttle mid throttle and even in full throttle so let me turn this block here let me show you guys how fresh this engine is oh man this is gonna be really really awesome really good you can see the red coolant there all right so now of course we have a video of the crankcase ventilation you can check it out so do check it out our link will be in the description below for this one here so as soon as the pistons arrive from australia from mother corp solutions we're gonna have this block honed and slightly decked and prep everything so that we can show you guys the final assembly and the tips and tricks we do and of course even the head as we're gonna finish this up and send it to the machine shop for the multi-angle valve job and the reduced exhaust on the valve seat so hey when it's done you can click here of course for the next one.